calcium deficiency. Let's talk about what the plants need it for first. Um, cell wall structure, new plant tissue development. So as the plants grow in and, and creating new uh, stems and leaves, so it's, it's very much needed for uh, proper growth, uh, you know, is for all that to form up well. Uh, contributes to plant stability, which is part of that proper growth. Uh, calcium is immobile, so once it gets to where it needs to be in a plant, it's not moving. That's That just is where it is. And it helps plants uh, to be able to move other nutrients and water inside the plant. And so what calcium does, one of the things it does, is it uh, helps with the pumps of the plant. So there's these little tiny plant pumps in plants that uh, will pump the water and nutrients around inside the plant and move some nutrients from one place to another if they're mobile. Uh, and calcium is, is what's responsible for that. Uh, what does the deficiency look like? Well, blossom and rot is something that a lot of people will see uh, on their tomatoes and, and other fruiting plants. Uh, and it's it's a telltale sign. I've had people argue with me and say, no, 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 it's, it's potassium, but it's not. It's calcium. Um, potassium causes other issues on the plant or on the, uh, the fruit. So we'll look at that eventually. But uh, for now, this is what we're seeing is, is the blossom and rot. On your new growth, this top left picture, you can see how the leaves are disformed and curling up. Uh, that's low calcium. And then on your strawberry plant, the uh, the leaf that's being shown or the several leaves being shown are some of the newer growth leaves. And they are dying around the tips. So it's, it's becoming a, a severe issue on these. Uh, let's go to tox uh, calcium toxicity. Um, if you have too much calcium, you can lock out magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, copper, zinc, iron, and boron. So you don't want to just go and start dumping whatever calcium product into your aquaponic system because you're going to end up in a situation where if you get too high, you're going to start locking other things out. Uh, and also, if uh, you're using a product that will raise the pH, you could end up, end up with the uh, pH that's getting way too high and creating other issues, locking out other minerals as well. So we don't want to do that either. Um, calcium deficiency causes. Uh, well, an overdose of potassium or nitrogen can cause calcium lockout. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the cocoa core that a lot of people use to uh, start their seedlings in and then they transfer that into net pots, whatever, in their bed, that, that sucks up calcium and, and sequesters it away to where it's not available for the plants. So if you're using cocoa core, make sure you keep it to a minimum. Uh, there's other issues that come out of using cocoa core, so you, you might want to dig into that, research it a little bit, and weigh the the pros and cons before you start using it. Something a lot of people don't know about is freshwater clams. So in mussels, uh, if you put those in, what they do is suck the calcium out of the water to build their shells, uh, and they do so very rapidly. So uh, if you're trying to run aquaponics with, with clams or mussels, uh, you're going to have some real issues with calcium along the way. So be aware of that. You may have to add you know, three times the amount of calcium just to keep up with what, what these uh, animals are using. Uh, if your pH is too high or too low, it uh, can lock out calcium. Uh, high humidity, so what will happen with high humidity, Humidity, and, and this is the same for all minerals, uh, if the plant's not able to transpire, then it's not going to be pumping water and minerals up through the plant. It's going to be kind of shut down and be a traffic jam. Uh, so uh, cold air and cold water temperatures will also lock out calcium. Uh, actually, I'm not so sure I'd say lock it out as much as I would that it just stops the flow through the plant. Um, calcium dosing. So this is something that's very important to know what you're getting and what you're going to use it for and what your end result would be. Uh, the One of the most common is uh, true new calcium carbonate. Uh, the next most common is true new calcium chloride. Calcium chloride can be sprayed on, so if you don't want to change the calcium content of your water, uh, and you don't have high humidity problems, you can spray this on. It'll give your plants a really quick jolt of, of uh, calcium. So if you are starting to see signs of blossom and rot, this will correct it really quickly to let your other uh, fruits grow as they should. Um, if and, and these will raise the pH, both of them will, if you put them in the system water. Uh, to dose not to alter the, the pH of your system, uh, you'll go with true calcium sulfate. Uh, so you still need to watch how much you're adding, but you don't have to worry about the pH effect of, of adding cal uh, calcium sulfate. 